that changed my life with sound was Jack Fling's Cash and Carry Grocery Store, which is this little store uh, in, in LaGrange, Georgia, where I grew up, in the, uh, on the Alabama, the less Tony side of Georgia, on the Alabama border. <laughs> and uh, this, imagine this is uh, right about the time when the Freedom Riders are riding buses. This is early 60s. I'm about 8, 10, 12 in that age group. In this store, there was Miss Helen Daniel with her blue wrap skirt on. She's stuck. She's got a groceries on her hip. And this is a forerunner of like 7-Eleven, the little store in the corner. This is the old mom and pop store. And, and Lois and Jack Fling own this store. And Jack Fling is a big old barrel of a guy. His nose looks like it's a, like a hood ornament. I mean, just his huge nose, you know. Uh, big old nostrils, just big, and big old larger than life. Talk like this all the time, you know. Just big, big guy, told stories all the time. And there are people sitting around. I mean, I'm holding two sticks, this orange popsicle. I'll never forget that. And I'm sitting there. I take a lick of that popsicle. I said, Ray, I haven't told you a story about Knuckles the cat. No, sir. Mm -hmm. Another lick. That cat, he loved nothing more than to ride. And he always rode shotgun in my seafoam green Chrysler DeSoto. Now, I'm still sitting on that bench, and he looked up and said, You follow me, Fred? I went, yes, sir. Got me another lick in my popsicle. And, and he said, I just cranked that. And I'd hear and he would sit right down beside me. My wife had to ride in the back. Couldn't go anywhere. She, he, anytime I cranked that thing, he would come, boom, 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 through. But lost two windows because he'd, boom, if they had the window rolled up, boom, right through the window. He wanted to ride in that thing. Jump cut. We're, we're, we're reading the paper one morning, and we see, oh, look at this. This is the Clyde Beatty Cold Brothers Circus coming out to the VFW. This is going to be big. Oh, we got to go see this. We can't. You know we can't go in the car because the knuckles will you know, tear that place apart. So we figured, this, here's our scheme. Go outside, close it. I almost cranked it, okay. Put my foot on the brake, put it in neutral. She gets it back, okay, come on, push, push. Take your foot off the brake, Jack. So I, I did, didn't make a noise. He's over, he's over there sleeping. Goes down, down to the front of the house. She goes in, out of the back, gets in the car, Right there. Okay, here we go. Come on, come on, baby. Everything starts going. Oh, here we go. We're going. We're going to the circus. And we hear. She said, "Floor it, Jack. He's on to us." And I floored him. And smoke came rolling over. Big old black gray smoke came rolling over the top. And she said, oh, good Lord, Jack, he's got hold of the back bumper. And he was there. He had sunk his fingernails into the asphalt. And he's going, mm, holding on the back bumper. She said, back over him, Jack. I said, no, I don't want to get mad at us. And so, we, so we started a tug of war. <laughs> couldn't couldn't out, out wedge him. We got... He, I stopped the car, he comes around. My wife jumped to the back seat. He goes, Row! and jumps in the front, Row! looks at us, Row! and I go, Ugh! and my wife in the back seat goes, Ugh! we're all mad. We're gonna go to the circus. We go through LaGrange, out to the VFW. Oh, it was amazing. It's like uh, they had, uh, guys on motorcycles, hey, 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 over the road, hey, 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 hey. a man in a, uh, a, like a cannonball man, shot out of a cannon. <laughs> Over the pine trees, never even heard him hit. Unbelievable. You know, clowns. <laughs> they out there, and the elephants <laughs> walking around. Oh, it was fantastic. The knuckles saw it before we did. He went, oh, oh. his eyes shot out like this. And we saw up there in big land, we saw world's biggest cat, the Bengal tiger. And this huge, huge cat walking around in this thing. Huge, like a sofa, like an orange striped sofa, just huge up there. Knuckles, his, his fingernails, ping, like his whistle, ping, like his, he went, like his, put the dump, jumped out the car, put the dump, put the dump. Put the dump, started running towards it, put the dump. And traffic, what is that, a footstool? People, and the, everyone's watching this thing. He runs across, people slide, goes right through the traffic, goes up to the, to the edge of the gate, goes, 
right through the bars of the cage. Like this. He gets on this side of the cage, and that cat's sitting up huge, like, like an upturned sofa. Like here, just going. And Knuckles starts to challenge him. The cat just sits there. Got nose to nose right here. Everything went quiet. Everything went quiet. I mean, it, it, was, it was so quiet you could hear the ants walk. I mean, everything. Traffic stopped. Police, woo, woo. Cut off the sirens. Clowns, like this. Elephant, what? Everybody's watching. And then the tiger made his move. He ate knuckles. Completely ate knuckles. Wow, like a big old trap. Wah, bap, over knuckle. Only the tail was sticking out. The tip end of the tail, and it's going, oh, like inside one of those big old like, decorated caves. Inside, oh, you're hearing knuckles calling out. And that tiger started to chew. Everybody's going, oh, knuckles. Oh, oh what a fate. But the way you'd chew if you had selected a chocolate, you weren't sure what it was. So he's kind of chewing, you know, like, mm, mm. he did not like what he had selected. He took a breath. He went, that tiger did. Pulled in air. The clown's hair went towards the stage. Everything, we felt red. It were all rushing. And he went, bang. Knuckles hit the other side of the cage and went, down into a just mangy old, heap. And that was it. And we all go, oh. Everybody's looking around and don't know what to do. And then we saw, ping, one ear came up. Ping, that was a piano wire. And a nail, ping. And then Knuckle lifted his head. Like this. But his eyes were huge. They were the size of like fried eggs. Huge like this. And Knuckles went up on his tippy toes. And he just eased out the the cage, and he walked. He crossed there, gets to the back of the car, puts his fingernail, opens up the door, gets in beside my wife. She gets out in the front seat. He's sitting back there. We, I turn around and look back. My wife turns around. He looks at us and he goes, "Wow!" <laughs> now, at that point, Jack Fling looked at me, and he said, "You don't believe that story, do you?" And I looked down, and I was holding two popsicle sticks. And there was a big puddle of sticky orange liquid. Even dripped on me, my flip-flops. It had dripped at the bottom. And before I answered, I went, wow. Just with his voice, nothing else. I saw every animation, every Warner Brothers cartoon. I saw it all. I want to be able to do that. And I remember thinking, I want to do that. And he said, uh, you don't believe that, do you? No, sir, I don't. He said, come on. He, it was, oh, he, he, he reared back in a chair and put a loaf of bread behind his head for a pillow and told the story. He was unwinding the story like you would a yarn, you know? And he, he rocked forward, patted on his thigh, and said, come on, come on. And out from the back came this mangy old cat the size of a footstool with these big old eyes, huge eyes. He said, Fred, this is Knuckles, Knuckles, this is Fred. And that cat on cue went, <laughs> that part of the story is dead true. The rest is all just like you know, what I remember from pieces of it. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>